All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the uh, May 17th, 2022 Vernon Town Council meeting. The mayor can't be here tonight, so I'll be uh, using the gavel in his place. And let me tell you guys, this chair is far more comfortable than the other ones. I don't know why. So anyway, uh, this being the last meeting of the town council before Memorial Day, I'd just like to recognize any veterans. Any veterans in the audience and around the council table can stand up, please. That would be great. I, miss, I believe Mr. Swickless would be, yes. Yeah. So, stay standing, Jim, because um, now the two of you can lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Daigle, give us the pleasure of the roll call, please. Councilmember Bush? Here. Campbell? Here. Clay? Here. Gesse? Here. Latender? Absent? Levesque? Here. Matola? Here. Nieves Mateus? 
O'Connell? Here. Rogers? Here. Tedford? Here. Wendis? Here. Your Honor, you have a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Daigle. So tonight we'll start off, the first thing is our Citizen Citations Awards, and which I believe most of you are here for. Um, the four inductees this evening for the Town of Vernon, Volunteer Wall of Honor, which is right behind you if you go out. When you're going down, out to the elevator, down the stairs, you'll see the wall right there. They've each dedicated over 20, hour, 20 years rather, to the Town of Vernon in a volunteer capacity, and uh, we'd like to take the opportunity to thank them. Just to give you an idea, across the spectrum of these four people, they've served on the, uh, some or all of them have served on the Town Council, Board of Assessment Appeals, Ethics Commission, Water Pollution Control Authority, Access Agency, Greater Hartford Transit Board, Hearing Officer, Talent County Chamber, Capital Improvement Committee, Design Review Committee, Energy Improvement District, Special Constable, Risk Management Committee, and the Zoning Board of Appeals, and so many other groups too. So we have quite a few citizens dedicated to volunteerism in the town. That's how we run and how we get things done uh, outside of our wonderful paid employees who are around here. So um, let's, we're gonna do it from in front here, so give me a second, and we'll start with the first person, of course. So we have, uh, I'll tell you, come over here, Dave, yeah. It's okay, I'm not gonna, it's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while, yes. Um, Dave Herman began his volunteer service to the town of Vernon through an appointment to the Zoning Board of Appeals as an alternate and continued there until 2005. In 2006, he was appointed to the Ethics Commission, a highly respected appointment by both parties. This position prohibits a member from serving on any other board or commission during their appointed term. David Herman's background as an attorney served him in the town well during the time. Dave served as chairman until 2013 when he was term limited off the commission. He was appointed later that year because we don't like to let him rest to the Risk Management Advisory Commission and served a full term there. He was reappointed then to the Ethics Commission and served two additional terms serving again as the commission's chairman. He's a highly respected member of our community and provided guidance to his very, various administrations under which he has served. He provided guidance to many new ethics commission members, which is very important, as well as residents with concerns about ethics. David Herman is here tonight with his uh, family, I believe, your yes, wife, my wife yes, and, my yeah, daughter. and daughter, as, uh, to celebrate with us. So it's my honor to uh, put David Herman's name in the Volunteer Wall, wall of Honor. We have a little pin, of course. So that pin is only worn by people who are on the Wall of Honor. So you have a very exclusive community. And then uh, we just have a, the same certificate for everybody. Town of Vernon hereby presents to inductee David A. Sherman, recognition of over 20 years of dedicated volunteer service to the residents of and all our memory visitors to the Town of Vernon. And it's signed by Mayor Daniel A. Champagne. And there you go. And thank you. Thank you very much. Get us some pictures. You want to bring up your wife and sure. you can hold that. Here. Your wife and daughter want to come up and. <laughs> Get a picture with me and then without me, Dave. <laughs> okay. Get a picture. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So next up we have Mary Oliver, and I know oh, she's not here. Uh, her husband Jim. And I'm sure you must have some more family here. We'll have them. We'll have them come up for some pictures too. Okay. Yeah. Family want to come up? Yeah. Can, yeah. After, okay. All right. How are you? Good. It's been a while. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Jim Swickless, Mary Oliver's husband. So, Mary Oliver was a steadfast supporter of the town of Vernon and its residents, of course, for over 20 years. As an elected official, she served on the town council for two terms under Mayor Ellen Marmer, sharing her knowledge of the area of finance and investments and pension. She was always willing to share her talents whenever she was needed. 
Her finance background served her well during the budget discussions each year. In addition to being an uh, elected position, Mary also volunteered to serve on the Greater Hartford Transit District Board of Directors, the Access Agency, Economic Development Commission, and Board of Assessment Appeals. She worked hard to keep the seniors and most needy of our residents in the forefront of every discussion, working with the Greater Hartford Transit Board to secure a new bus for Hockenham Valley and to purchase a bus for our senior center. She was a member of the Democratic Town Committee and served as the Justice of the Peace for many years. She had many interests and kept actively involved with the parent-teacher organization at her children's school, swim team, Rockville Hospital Follies, and in her business life was a member of the Tallinn County Chamber of Commerce. She was also a certified senior advisor, making her especially in demand to assist the senior population. She's represented tonight by her husband, Jim, and many other friends of family. So it's our honor to add Mary's name to the Volunteer Wall of Honor. So. Oh, Jim, the pin in Mary's honor. Thank you. And then, of course, that same certificate. The condition. So if you want to uh, well, have a, some pictures taken, right. now you can come up. So we'll do the same thing, get a few, and then you get me out of the picture. <laughs> How are you going to do it? Okay. Here, let's, we better move this way here. Yeah. Or, or here. Okay. Okay. Good. Dave, take, Dave, take some without me. Okay, well, Brian just about conveniently covered everything I had to say. I just wanted to uh, thank you for coming in uh, honor of my wife, Mary Oliver. We were married for uh, 30, 37 years before she passed last year. And uh, she came to Vernon in uh, 1971. And <clears throat> Brian uh, pretty well covered all the committees she was on. The uh, Rockville Follies, and uh, the PTO. And uh, I appreciate everyone coming in uh, and uh, for her commemoration. And thank you very much. The family of John Anderson. Do you, wanna, you can come up. I haven't bitten yet. Just you know. Just. Okay, we. Um, John Anderson, of course, we served in many capacities over the last 20 years. He believed that one person could make a difference if they were dedicated to the cause, and he, he uh, lived that. In the early years, he coached his son's baseball team, giving back to the children of Vernon, bringing the theme of commitment to whatever he took on and teaching the team spirit. John later moved on to volunteering at the town level by being appointed to the Water Pollution Control Authority Board over and over again where he served, of course, multiple terms and helped guide the authority through multiple changes in service to two additional towns, Tallinn and Ellington. John always had his eye on the details, making sure the rates were fair and outstanding service was maintained. He served under two authority directors during his tenure and shared his knowledge with countless other board members. John also served as a special constable and was one of the first members of the Energy Improvement District Board. Simultaneously, John turned, served the Vernon Republican Town Committee as committee chair and then as nominating chairman, searching out individuals to volunteer for boards, commissions, and committees. He was also a mentor to many interested in becoming involved. He enjoyed debating and hearing all opinions. He was sought after as a guide to the complexities of government. We're joined this evening by John's sister, Carol, it's Carol Vernard, and other family and friends. It's, of course, my honor to add John to the Volunteer Wall of Honor this evening. 
And here's a pin. Of course, the same, same plaque. Do you want anybody uh, want to come up? Yeah. Any? My son, right come on up. there. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You can take pictures. He can, he can, he can do your camera too if you want, if you'd like. You guys can hold this here. You can. Thank you very much. Yes. Mom. Yep. Sorry. Right, and then get a picture without me. Thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it. John would appreciate it. Last but not least, Lisa Moody. <laughs> Both Lisa and John served in the uh, registrar's office, too. So, so uh, we all know Lisa Moody began her career as a volunteer in, uh, I don't want to say that year, okay, so. uh, 1983, when she was appointed as an alternate member of the Zoning Commission. She moved right to the top position as a town council member in 1985 and served multiple terms. During her term on the council, Lisa served on the Capital Improvement Committee, volunteered to be a member of the PMBC subcommittee involved in the 1988 school renovation project. She represented the town of Vernon in CROG, C-R-C-O-G, and in 1989 was elected among her peers to be mayor pro tem for a term. Lisa left the political scene in Vernon for a while to work in Hartford in the governor's office. But she continued to volunteer helping the police department to get a canine officer through an organized donation campaign and work behind the scene in groups like the RDA. Um, and I believe you did more than one, right? Oh, yeah. And more than one uh, term in capital improvements, too. About 35 years. Yeah. yeah. Um, in 1998, she became a member of the Design Review Committee um, as a result of her passion to get things looking uniformly in the town of Vernon. Should be noted, she left the council, was continued to be a member of the Capital Improvements Committee, and is in continued this day. Only as uh, whomever, I think Diane wrote this, a mere 30 years later. That's it. Just a mere 30 years. Uh, later, she can't... I'm still 28, though. Just of course, that. yes. It was 19... Uh, yeah, 2003, yeah, yeah. yes. This year, she championed a cause to replace Thor, one of the Vernon Police canines that passed away, and was very successful in raising 35000 toward this cause, and the new canine in tears being trained. Lisa's done many things for the women of the community. She joined groups like the Vernon Junior Women's Club to encourage women to become more active. As a result of her encouragement, there have been four women from the Junior Women's Club who have run for office and won seats. It's my honor, indeed, to add Lisa Moody's name to the Volunteer Wall of Honor. Here's your, here's your pin. Thank you. Bring anybody. That's okay. And by the way, the pins are one of a kind pins, so only people who are on the wall of honor get those pins. Don't lose it. You have to sign an affidavit with Diane if you need to replace it. So. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So. So now I heard the rumor there's cookies out there and some beverages, so we'll take a, like a break here to celebrate with everybody and share their good fortune. Thank you very much. And then we'll come back in 10 minutes or so.
Okay, let's re-adjourn the council meeting. Sorry, Linda. No, we don't need the gavel. All right, everybody, we'll come to order. You want me to use the gavel? Is, that Is anybody here for uh, Citizens Forum tonight? Anybody here for Citizens Forum? No, I didn't think so. All right. We'll save executive sessions for the end, and we'll go to the agenda. Ms. Bush. Thank you, Mr. Matola. Pursuant to the chapter, pursuant to the charter, chapter eight, section eight, the town council hereby approves Daniel, Mayor Daniel Champagne's appointment of Susan Rugen, 61 East Street, Vernon, Connecticut, as a member of the Inland Wetland Regulatory Commission, said term to commence on May 18th, 2022, and expire on December 31st, 2024. Second. Seconded by Mr. Tedford, I heard first. Any discussion on the appointment? No, okay, that's a vote. All in favor, aye. aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Any abstentions? No abstentions, it passes. New business number one, please. Thank you, Ms. Rotola. The town council, consistent with the town of Vernon personnel rules and reg oh, yeah personnel rules and regulations, section 4.1b, entitled job descriptions, hereby adopts the amended job description of accreditation manager. I'm seconded by Ms. Clay. I thought. Oh, I'm sorry, Marianne. Seconded by Marianne. Okay, I see. Ms. Maslick is here. Could you please just uh, give us the revisions that we're talking about tonight? Uh, yes, through the deputy mayor. Uh, the only change is the, um, the wage and salary. Uh, it is a non-exempt position, and when it was presented, it was presented in the category of E4. E stands for exempt positions. Uh, and upon um, review with uh, Labor Council, it, it, it should be considered a non-exempt position. And uh, so we changed the um, wage classification to an N, which is for non-exempt. Anybody have any questions concerning this item? Nothing? Clear? Everybody? Good? All right. Thank you, Ms. Maslick. Any, uh, we'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Any abstentions? No abstentions. All right, the motion passes. Ms. Bush. Yes, resolve that the town council hereby approves budget amendment number 14 for physical year 2021-2022 for the purpose of GIS mapping of the Vernon Stormwater Collection Network by appraisal resource group in an amount not to exceed $4,500. Second. Seconded by Mr. Tedford, I heard first. What? I heard Jim, I don't know. All right. Well, that's true, I hear. So I believe Mr. Smith, are you here tonight for this uh, exciting item? Uh, oh, all right, Mr. Picaro said he'll uh, do the heavy lifting tonight for any questions. Okay, yeah, we'll bring you in reserve. Warm up in the bullpen. Yes. Thank you. Through the Deputy Mayor, um, we respectfully request this budget amendment for a couple of reasons. One, 
uh, as, and I'll, I'll take us back in time from an emergency management standpoint. If you recall, uh, we had the historic 100-year flood that actually happened like three or four times in, a, in an eight-week period. Um, and what that revealed uh, are some uh, uh, concerns with our stormwater network and making sure that we have a full inventory of all the locations so that they can be properly maintained. Um, so this is important for us, uh, not only to prepare and plan for the next uh, wave of rainfall, that uh, historic rainfall, if that ever happens again. Hopefully it really won't happen for another 100 years, but considering it happened three times in, a, in an eight-week period, um, we have to plan and prepare for it. Um, but also I think it's important for us to maintain our infrastructure. And uh, as part of our budget this year, there was a strong push um, for us to be looking at maintaining infrastructure, properly maintaining equipment. You saw that presented by various department heads. Uh, and then this is an extension of that. So we have an opportunity um, to map the locations of all of the stormwater network that we have. Um, that's the first important step for us to make a data-driven decision on how to properly maintain it and plan for it budgetarily and operationally. So with this amendment to the budget, utilizing existing funds, no additional appropriation from the general fund, uh, we will be able to, at a very reasonable and competitive price, utilizing our existing consultant, uh, Mr. Aaron Nash. Some of you may remember him from his work here in the town. It continues on a consultant basis. Um, to address this. And, and I would be remiss if I didn't give credit um, to Mr. Tedford uh, and to Mr. Campbell, who've also uh, demonstrated a passion for some of this work as well, um, and to Mr. Levesque previously as well, um, who have a ton of institutional knowledge of our existing networking system. Uh, and we'll certainly be taking advantage of that as we continue to map this out. But this, the goal is to get a complete inventory once and for all uh, and then begin planning and preparing uh, budgetarily and operationally for maintaining it properly. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? Ms. Clay? For you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, I, I guess, if Mike, if you want to answer these. Um, on the scope of work, it says licensing for the mobile applications is available with the town's agreement with ERSI. What, what does that mean, and, and is there a cost to that licensing? So uh, through the deputy mayor, um, so it, it's important for us once we have this data to put it out in as many usable formats as possible. Um, we have a GIS layer in, in our uh, building department and our uh, uh, various other you know, uh, departments that can access this information if they need it. Certainly public works will be able to look at it as well. We're trying to modernize and, and use technology to our advantage as much as possible so when our workers are out in the field, they'll be able to pull it up on an app, pull it up on a tablet, on their phone, um, so that they'll, they'll be able to do the work, log it, you know, put a record in there, and then we'll have you know, a permanent record of the work that's done. So um, that, that's, that, that part's important. As far as the licensing fees, Dave, I don't know if, you're, if you have that information available or we can get back to Councilwoman Clay with the cost. Yeah, use the mic, Dave. Just repeat it again through the mic, please. Here we go. We have two ESHRI lic licenses that we share in our office with planning. Um, it's actually installed on several machines, but only two people are allowed to use it at any one time. And that helps us produce many of the maps that you guys see um, from time to time to support various projects or concepts, and this would be part of that. The mobile application is a, is a means of building on field observations. Much of this data is already somewhere existing, and Aaron's job is to ferret it out and put it into a useful format for so us. When he does that, is it going? And he's got that extra layer for the for the um, for the storm water. Is that going to cost an, an additional amount? Like, is that a menu no. item? No, it'll be part of this. No, the, the, the base uh, program or system that we have allows us to create any layers we want, okay. as many as we want. Okay. It's just creating those layers. We have people like Craig Perry in my office is pretty good at, at manipulating those once they exist. It's the creating and, and, and building that informational database Excellent. that okay. we need Mr. Nash's help with. Okay. And um, on the section under timeline, it said editing process six to eight months contingent on availability of engineering staff. 
I just want to know, were they referring to their engineering staff or our engineering staff? Our engineers. So, so uh, again, the same sort of thing. Um, GIS doesn't generally create information. It gathers it and, and it redisplays it in a way that it's useful to us. So we have cabinets and cabinets full of as-builts. Um, subdivision plans, aerial photography, things like that that he can some of it is can remotely access. Others of it will have to scan them and feed them 50 maps at a time kind of a thing, um, which we can do in-house, but it, it's going to require somebody on the inside also helping to, to get that information to him. I just want to clarify on there whether they were talking us, about it's that. It's us. Or... We're helping with okay, it. Okay. Okay. And... Um... When you're updating the town to the latest version of ARC GIS Enterprise, is there an additional cost to that? That is probably built into the IT program because it's something that we've had for 15 or more years and just continues to renew itself. So I couldn't tell you. Um, I don't think it's an add-on. We're, we're trying to work within our existing capacity. Okay. And, and given the specific job for... ARG, I, um, you said Aaron Nash. Um, His firm is appraisal resource group or something. Okay, that's so will that, was it $4,500? Is that the money that's going to cover everything? There won't be add-ons or... Um, that gets us done this scope of work. That scope and, of work will be done, nothing added on to it. That is correct, and um, likely that's going to then become something I'm going to use to prepare budgets and proposals and things in the next few years sure. for your attention. But, but no, that gets us where we need to be with inventory, identifying and putting specific markers on these things so that as the guys do work in the field, they can coordinate it, we can evaluate weak spots, that sort of thing. Okay, so he, you don't anticipate any change order ads that he would increase that amount? Nope. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. <clears throat> Anybody else? Let's get Ms. Kessick. No, no, okay, thank you, Deputy Mayor. So my question involves the timeline for completion of the project. I know it's months long. The editing portion is six to, six to eight months. What, what do you see if we have the availability of staff? What do you see as the end date, the completion date? And I'm not going to hold you to it. Just try to winter. Mm -hmm. Which actually works out quite nicely because um, that's about the time I'll be putting capital budget together for um, fixing stormwater retention basins and upgrading pipes and things like that. So. Great. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Ms. Nieves Mateus. Thank you. Uh, through you. Uh, just for clarification purposes, uh, as someone who works in a field where acronyms are heavily deployed, I was just curious. Um, if we could kind of break down um, some of these. So uh, GIS, what does that stand for? GIS? Mm -hmm. the Geographic Information System. Thank you. And then MS4. MS4 is the municipal separate storm sewer system program from the DEEP. So that's where the four comes from, separate sewer system. Okay. It doesn't make any sense to me either, but that's what they call it. <laughs> Not a problem. I just wanted to clarify. And then um, in terms of the intent of this project, um, it's just to get a quality analysis of what we're currently working with. But through, the, through the deputy mayor? So the, the intent, uh, very frank, is to make sure we have a full and complete inventory of all of the stormwater network in the town of Vernon. And by doing so, then we'll be able to plan, as Dave was uh, mentioning, both budgetarily, public works, operationally, um, to maintain it and to enhance the maintenance schedule that we currently have in place. Um, over the years, there's a lot of culverts, so there's been a lot of change to the demographics of the community, you know, geographically speaking, and, and these things are, you know, some of them are out in the woods, and some of them, uh, you know, haven't been looked at in a little bit. And we, we noticed some of these areas when we had the 100-year flood floods, 
um, and it came to light. And so we want to make sure on behalf of the residents that we have a full inventory so that we can now put them on a maintenance schedule to make sure that they're clear, they're open, they're functioning at maximum capacity. Um, and, and that'll help us and that'll help our residents as far as drainage goes. Wonderful. Thank you for the clarification. And then just uh, one last question. Um, in terms of specifications that was provided on the scope of work, um, just want to clarify what the QA stands for, an update and QA existing. I'm sorry, I couldn't. Really... It's under the specifications section under the scope of work, February 10th, 2022. Mm hmm Sorry. So I just wanted to clarify what QA stood for. That's quality assurance. Quality assurance. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Questions? 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 So um, I have a couple questions. Um, uh, well, to either either one of you. So um, the sanitary sewers are they GIS mapped? They are already. That's right. we're hoping to have a layer similar to that. Yeah. So at, at this point, if you wanted to get into the GIS and see how the sewer network exists, where it extends, where it's um, individual manholes, piping that connects it, that's already in place. Aaron did that when he was a full-time employee here. Um, he never got to do the storm sewer right, system, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and it's time. Okay, so d I know when we did the roads over, we did put in new basins or whatever, the base catch basins and all the top and the part you see in the street, mm -hmm. whatever you call them. I don't remember what to call it. But, so I'll, I would assume that we know a lot about that and also that the storm sewers sort of parallel the sanitary sewers? Um, not necessarily. Every, for the most part, it flows downhill, but different directions. <laughs> so so all, all the stormwater work that has been done over the years has been sort of discrete little elements of it. Some of it came as part of subdivision developments and things like that. Others came as town projects where there was a need, but there's never been a comprehensive sort of atlas of it. Ron was probably the only, so we could either put him in a computer or somehow capture that knowledge, but no one else has that, so. No, I understand why you're doing that. I was just curious as, I would think that at some point in time they parallel this. Well, uh, no, not, un not unreasonable. Yes. Yeah, they, they do that, but um, at some point they depart. These yes. have much more short runs because the first opportunity to find a brook or a receiving stream or something like that, they generally daylight, um, unlike the sewer treatment yeah. plant, which is just continuing to aggregate flow upon flow until it gets down to the plant where it's dealt with. But, okay. Yeah, so. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Questions? No? All right, so let's, let's vote. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Any abstentions? No abstentions. The motion passes. Thank you very much. Ms. Bush. Yes. The town council hereby resolves in accordance with chapter 12, section nine of the town charter that it is in the best interest of the town to waive the sealed bid requirement for the cost associated with design services for the Kelly Road Bridge project provided by Cardinal Engineering of the Meriden, of Meriden in the amount not to exceed $67,000 and further authorizes Mayor Daniel A. Champagne or his designee to execute on behalf of the town of Vernon in any uh, Vernon any instruments to that e effect. Second. Second. Jim got it. Mr. T I heard Mr. Tedford first. So there we go. Is he tonight? All right. Mr. Smith. Now officially on. <laughs> Some years ago, um, Cardinal Engineering was engaged to design improvements to deal with the Kelly Road Bridge. Um, at the time some repair work up was, was considered necessary. Uh, the plans were prepared. The uh, project went out to bid. There were two bidders. The price exceeded whatever the available funds were at the time. And the project was basically uh, put aside for a while, either to raise more funds or 
to, to see what would happen. So um, the economy didn't change. Uh, town engineer changed positions probably from Tim to my predecessor, Terry, to me. And it was out there. We carried it around on our capital budget, but it was always in and out year. Um, and at some point, we did part of the road bond was to mill the blacktop off of that bridge and the approaches. And in doing so, it reminded everybody that the bridge deck was in kind of rough shape and that we ought to not continue to ignore this particular problem. So I asked Cardinal Engineering, since we already had them involved, to say, what would it take to bring your earlier work of 14, 15 years ago up to the forefront, verify that it's, it's sound practice, and um, and help us get this thing out to bid again, and um, bless you. And um, so, so that is the proposal that you have as part of the packet, I believe, that was sent to you. Um, so, uh, I think that this is an excellent opportunity for us to build on an existing body of knowledge, and consequently save a great deal of money, as opposed to going out for a classic sealed bid request, which, just for a relative scale of magnitude for Pleasant View Drive, Dart Hill Road, Main Street Bridge, that's between two and $300,000 just to do the design work. So here we are just gonna go through, pay them for their time to revise it. It also includes help with bidding and the inspection portion of the job. So, so it, in a lot of ways, this is a real opportunity for us. Um, I did put in last year's request, or, or February's request, some funds for um, the actual construction. That memo was written back then. Um, that didn't pass muster this year, but it would be sure it will be here next year. So, But also, by that time, we may have a better idea of what the cost would be, too. So it won't be just a, a placeholder. So, OK. Any questions? Ms. Rogers. Hi, thank, this is, is a very simple question. Excuse Where is this bridge? I'm sorry. <laughs> if, if you were to go past with the old Angelinos, that's Kelly Road. A little further down through there, it crosses the Hockenham River. Okay. All right. You, you done? I done. You're, you're okay? Okay, good. Thank you. Ms. Clay. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, in the, in, they're doing the engineering services, but it also says under construction that um, they are going to pre prepare change orders. Do you anticipate any change orders above and beyond what they're... No, that's just a, a customary service that during construction administration or inspection, as you encounter field conditions, then the contractor says, that's not what I bid on. You know, you said that there was pilings here and there aren't pilings here. That's a change order. For, so the, for, the, for the construction work. Right, not for the engineer. No, no. What, this, this proposal from, from Mr. Cremola is, is our total commitment to them. Okay. So then under F, he says, um, or the contract says additional services, which are not included in the above scope, will be provided as an additional service on a cost plus basis. Are we anticipating anything above and beyond or... Um, I, I was also thinking with the increase in prices for everything right now, is he anticipating that by the time we, he starts this work? No, I think it's if we change our mind on something and we say, okay, fine, we, we want you to prepare an as-built. We want you to do um, research available grant funds that might be available. I mean, you know, it, 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 those additional services, when we ask for more service, there's a fee that goes along with that. but. To, to execute what he's enumerated here as, as our base contract, if you will, um, that's where their, their figures are developed from. But in, in your experience, it would stay within those um, that budget? Oh, that, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, you don't anticipate some unforeseen thing that would happen? No, I, you know, I mean, their, the design work is something they've already done their field work. They may have to refresh it a little bit. Their plans and specifications probably have to be converted from one kind of an AutoCAD to a different kind of an AutoCAD. These are all predictable. Okay. Um, 
where we don't have um, control or perhaps the ability to forecast is once they open up, pull back the membrane, we know we have to do work on the concrete deck. That was evident 15 years ago. How has it aged? Well, maybe it's a little bigger scope than we thought it was going to be. There's a membrane that goes on top of that between the concrete and the, and the blacktop. There's uh, expansion joint material. Once we see it, we know how much the contractor's going to have to, either through unit pricing or change orders. Um, so it won't affect our arrangement with cardinal engineering necessarily, but uh, once we select XYZ contractor, there's a certain amount of unknown in any of these projects. Once we open them up, oh, then you can see what's going on. Yeah, I meant just from no, the but but no, stuff. for for our purposes with with the design work and and the more academic side of this, um, it's it's a straightforward exercise. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Anybody else questions? Questions? Anything else? All right. Well, my, I of course I do. Yes. So. Um, Mr. Smith, you mentioned the other bridges, and you said 200 to 300,000 in cost, but you mean per bridge, right? For the total? Yes, okay. for the, just the design portion of it. Right. And then we have almost the same amount typically in inspection and construction administration fees. This is a smaller, more simple project, but it, it's, it's not an order of magnitude different. It's, it's uh, like I said, I, I think that. This, I wouldn't have brought it. For, if he just said, I want $400,000 to bring up the old design, I would say, well, we're going to go out to bid, and yep. you could, you're welcome to offer your services competitively. But this, this one was priced, um, I thought, very attractively for us. Seems to be. A yeah. um, uh, question I had, too, is also with this, uh, because it's older, right? So sometimes, you know, you have to redo something because it's too old and the state won't, mm -hmm. doesn't like that process that was done, but that's okay with this? The state's going to have no problem with so, so this, taking it back? This particular project is, is unlike some of the others, which have been total reconstruction. Dart Hill, for example. Um, the, the old bridge is going away and a brand new one's coming in place. This one is building on an existing structure. It's, it's kind of more than maintenance and less than total reconstruction, so it's rehabilitation, whatever. The funds for it will be um, solely Vernon funds. So we have complete control over that. This, the state of Connecticut is not involved in this one. Oh, they don't even, we don't even have no, to. We'll have to do prevailing wages and yeah. those sort of things, but, but we, we are not going to be uh, able to, to secure lots of funds or um, federal highway monies as part of a typical reimbursement okay. or partial cost sharing type of thing. So. And uh, Cardinal's done other work for us? They've done a great deal of work. Um, West Main Street at the bottom of the hill, uh, not Phoenix, but the other one just down the, downstream. Um, they did um, Prospect Street, the reconstruction of Prospect Street. Um, Bolton Road is so. The, so we had a long-standing relationship with them. Um, they, we haven't done a no. I take it back. South Street was an, it was one one. I was well since I've been here. So good. All right. I'm satisfied. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Anything else? Nobody. Nobody. All right. Let's vote. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Any abstentions? No abstentions. All right. The motion passes. In the affirmative. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for coming tonight. So you may have a cookie on the way out, young man. <laughs> yes. uh, we'll, we'll go to executive session last. And now, I know we've all been waiting for this, the startling reading of eight-minute motions. <laughs> Ms. Bush, you're on. Thank you. The town council waves the reading of the minutes of the regular town council meeting on May 3rd, 2022 and that minutes of said meeting be approved. Mr. Ms. Bush makes the motion. Mr. Wendis seconds the motion. Any discussion on those minutes, those specific minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Any abstentions? No abstentions. Ms. Bush. 
Thank you. The Town Council waives the reading of the minutes of the Special Town Council budget meeting of March 19th, 2022, and that minutes of, the, of said meeting be approved. Ms. Bush makes the motion. Mr. Wendis seconds it. Any discussion on these set of items? These, no? Okay, call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Any abstentions? No abstentions. Motion passes. Ms. Bush? Thank you. The Town Council waives reading of the minutes of the Special Town Council budget meeting of March 21st, 2022, and that meeting, minutes of said meeting be approved. Second. Second. Ooh, I don't know who seconded that first. Ms. Rogers. I got it. Ms. Rogers seconded it. Any discussion? All right, let's call for a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? No opposed. Any abstentions? No abstentions. The motion passes. Ms. Bush. The Town Council waives the reading of the minutes of the special Town Council budget meeting of March 24th, 2022, and that minutes of said meeting be approved. Second. Mr. Wendis, I heard it first. Mr. Wendis, second. Any discussion on this one? All right, call for vote. All in favor? Uh, any opposed? No opposed. Any abstentions? All right. Karen, Ms. Levesque abstains from that set. The motion passes. Ms. Bush? The Town Council waives a reading of the minutes of the Special Town Council Budget Meeting of March 28th, 2022, and that minutes of said meeting be approved. <laughs> Mr. Wendis seconds it. Any discussion on these set of minutes? All right, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Any abstentions? No abstentions. The motion passes. Ms. Bush? The Town Council waives the reading of the minutes of the Special Town Council Budget Meeting of March 31st, 2022, and that minutes of said meeting be approved. Second. March Ooh, I don't know. I think Marianne got that one. Yeah. I, honestly, or, I know. Um, or Terry? Terry? Terry got that. Okay. Terry Rogers seconded it. Any discussion on these? All right. Vote. All in favor? Any opposed? No opposed. Any abstentions? No abstentions. The motion passes. Ms. Bush. The Town Council waives the reading of the minutes of the Special Town Council Budget Meeting of April 4th, 2022, and that minutes of said meeting be approved. <laughs> John O'Connell. <laughs> Sneaking in. All right. John, Mr. O'Connell seconds it. Any discussion? All right. All in favor? Any opposed? No opposed. Any abstention? No abstentions. The motion passes. Ms. Bush. The Town Council waives the reading of the minutes of the Special Town Council meeting of April 26, 2022, and that minutes of said meeting be approved. Second. Ooh. Ms. Nieves. Nieves. <laughs> Second. Oh, my heavens. This is too much. All right. Any, any discussion on this one? Any discussion? Any discussion? No. All right. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Any abstentions? No abstentions. The motion passes. Thank you very much for reading those, Ms. Bush. All of us. And we'll go back to executive session, please. Thank you. The town council pursuant to the authority given in Connecticut General Statutes 1-202 hereby moves to go into executive session to discuss personnel and invites Michael J. Picaro, town administrator, and Don Maslick, town, assistant town administrator, and uh, fire chief Steve Epler to attend. Second. Seconded by Mary Ann. All those in favor? Not really discussing item. Okay, any opposed? Any abstentions? No abstentions? Vote was unanimous. Okay, we'll proceed to the inner sanctum.
телевизор. Bill, no more brownies. You ready, Laura? You have to go to bed soon. Uh, Karen. Be tired. You can sleep anytime ready? you want. Ready? Ms. Dago, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Even though Mike's not here. Okay. The town council, consistent with the Town of Vernon personnel rules and regulations, section 4.1B, entitled Job Descriptions, hereby adopts the job description and pay scale for cemetery superintendent effective July 1st, 2022. Second. Second, Mr. Wendis, I heard first. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. Oops. Any opposed? I see no opposed. Any abstentions? No abstentions, motion passes unanimously. Ms. Bush? The town council consistent with the town of Vernon personnel rules and regulations, section 5.0, Compensation system hereby adopts the new pay scale for the position of assistant building official. Second. Second. I think I heard Mary Ann first. So, oh, Terry Lynn? Terry Lynn? Who knows? Somebody over there. Me. <laughs> Ms. Rogers made the second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, vote. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? None. Any abstentions? No abstentions, the motion passes. Ms. Bush. The town council consistent with the town of Vernon personnel rules and regulations, section 5.0, compensation system, hereby adopts the new pay scale for the position of cemetery maintainer. Second. I heard Mr. Mr. Wendis. Made a second. Discussion. No discussion, we'll vote, all in favor, aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Any abstentions? No abstentions. The vote passes unanimously. Ms. Bush? The town Council, consistent with the Town of Vernon Chapter, Chapter 14, Section 3, Personnel Rules, hereby adopts the addendum to the Town of Vernon Personnel Rules and Regulations for the full-time EMS employees in its entirety as presented. Second. Ms. Navis Mateus made the second there. You can't get them all, Wendis. Stop that. <laughs> Any discussion on the, uh, the item? Any discussion? No? All right. We'll vote. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No opposed.